Hi, my name's Lisa and this is Back to Basics with Lisa Baker. That's me. And this is Eloise. Hiya. Um, I'm almost 11 years sober now. I stopped drinking on the 1st of September 2010. Um, I stopped drinking by going to AA meetings, by having a very good sponsor and by um, doing a 12-step programme, which I do daily. Um, which I do daily now um, to my best ability. Um, this is going to be talking about people that have had drink problems, have recovered from drink problems, um, because I feel there's a real stigma around alcoholi alcoholism still. Um, we're in 2021 now and I still feel some views are really old-fashioned. Mm. Um, and I want people to be able to talk about it more because it's, it's still hidden, it's still swept under the carpet. And if I can do these vlogs, I think they're called, in my own home, in the comfort of my own home, talking to a friend that's in recovery, I think it's going to help more people to be able to yeah, talk about it. Um, there is a preconception that the alcoholic is a man, or a little old man, or a little old woman on a park bench <laughs> with their bottle in a brown paper bag, <laughs> sipping away. But, as me and Eloise both know, our friends are all walks of life, mm. all races, um, we've got friends that are creative, artistic, musical, professional, clever. We're a wide variety. Of wide people. variety. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you meet so many, so many different people. It doesn't, it doesn't pick and choose is what I'm trying to say. Um, there is no class to become a problem drinker, alcoholic. Mm. Um, and... We're just going to just what we're going to be doing is having a little chat between between us. Um, mm. The reason um, it's stopped me from drinking, I've been abstinent now for eleven years almost. But the main, the fundamental part of it was me is me talking to another alcoholic yeah. because mm. in recovery, an alcoholic in recovery, because we understand how we think, we understand how we feel. And we don't have to explain what's going on in here because we both understand. We all we understand each other um, without having to explain it because we're wired a little bit differently to others. Yeah, you said it off the bat there, Lisa. We we connect with one another. Yeah, 100%. it doesn't matter what path of life we've all walked. Yeah. We all understand each other on a different level on a different scale yeah. because we've all we're all trying to solve that common problem, and yeah. that's our drinking and our Absolutely. alcoholism. Absolutely. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where we come from or, you know, how old we are yeah. and what age gap we've Absolutely. got. We're just... Uh, mm. So that was my little bit of blurb, just to... And I'm going to be doing a few of these with different people, but tonight it's Eloise has come to join me and she's going to tell us a bit about her story, how she came to be in recovery. And um, if you do watch this video and at the end of it you like what you hear and hopefully it's going to help someone come out, of, you know, come out with their problem even a family member it's just to get us all talking another thing i wanted to mention is mental health is really the topic at the moment mm. but i don't hear alcoholic mental health being the topic that's still swept under the carpet and mm. still um so it's just so we can get it out there so if you'd like to if you do enjoy it please subscribe share or like um so now i don't know where you want to start eloise but um <laughs> thank you for coming along and talking to me Thanks, Lisa. Um, yeah, um, I won't do the whole AA introduction type thing because, you know, this is just recovery speaking. Yeah. Um, but I'll start from the off. Um, I wasn't born into an alcoholic family. Um, I wasn't, you know, that wasn't, no one in my immediate family is alcoholic. Yeah. Um, so my childhood until I was about six was pretty normal. Um, I met my mum met my brother's dad and that's when chaos sort of happened in my life and I I started to see things and things happened that shouldn't have happened to a six-year-old or a six-year-old shouldn't have seen and um, he was a very heavy drinker lots of drugs in my mum's house and alcohol all the time and from a young age I've always noticed that bad things came from drinking yeah. as soon as that drink yeah. was picked up yeah. In my household, yep. there was chaos. Yeah. Um, you know, Same. from a very young age, um, and I always, I always remember myself saying, oh, "I'm not going to be like that. I'm <gasps> never going to do that." Yep. Rah, rah, rah. The same yep. old, you know. And um, as life went on, uh, just 
mad, utter madness. Um, I took my first drink when I was 13, 12, 13. We used to have family barbecues and friends, all, everyone from the estate. We lived in a massive cul-de-sac estate. Where are you from? Um, from down south in, in Bognor. Oh, and, you're, um, you're from these areas? Yeah, well, my family are from north, up north, oh, but okay. we moved down here when I was young. Um, so, yeah, uh, we used to have, like, big big barbecues on the street, and it was just, you know, every, there was, my house is full of drink. Oh, um, yeah. You know, my stepdad, my, my brother's dad um, used to get them all in, and it was just a massive party. And I knew that what things used to, what would happen at the end of the night, it would end up in fights, it yeah. would end up in brawls, it weren't pleasant. Um, it never was going to go well, was it? No, no. And um, my mum uh, bought loads of, Bacardi breezes, um, and uh, I remember drinking quite a few. There was a few of me and my friends. They were a bit older than me, and we, I was drinking with drinking them with them. And um, I just remember that fizzy feeling, yeah. and that you know. But I drank off from the offset. I drank alcoholically. That I blacked out on my first drink. See, because I, you were younger you know, than me, you had yeah. Bacardi breezes. We used to have martini <laughs> and <laughs> martini and cider until it came out your nose. <laughs> yeah. you, you was more sophisticated. Yeah, the, the Alki Pops, I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. them. And um, yeah, we literally, and I, I loved it. I just, I didn't remember the rest of the night. It was great. So all that only carnage, we would talk like that though, isn't yeah. it? Most people would put them off. Oh, that was great. We, we got sick but and we didn't remember nothing. That I grew up like having to go through. I was like, oh, this what, here's a, here's my solution, solution to all my problems. Yeah. I, I wanted to be, feel no, I didn't want to feel anything. I didn't want to remember anything, and that was my that was my answer. Um, you know, and I, I my behaviours, my 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 isms from from were from the off as well. I was a shit. At school. I was a nightmare. I, see, I, 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 I got a bit naughty later on. But. Oh, I just, you know, we, we used to get drunk on the common and then we'd go into school drunk, oh. like uh, coming to the end of year 10 and 11. I would truant, I was hardly there. Um, you know, my, my misbehaviours were were all, were all coming up. And um, then I left school and I, I moved... I was with my grandparents in between this because of the chaos that was happening mm. at my mother's house. And um, when my mum finally left that relationship, um, she moved back to Bognor and um, I moved back in with her. By then I was leaving school. Um, I was just, a wi I was wild. Oh, I, and I treated my mother's house like a hotel. I would I would go out, I would come back in and through my life people took me and said, you're like Jesus, you go out on a Friday, you come <laughs> home on a Monday, you know, and um, I really did take the mick. And um, my mum said, oh, I can't deal with this. Like she had my two younger brothers and it just, you know, it wasn't So you okay. went off the rails. So yeah, yeah. and um, she wanted me to go back with my grandparents. I didn't go back with my grandparents at the time. I just sort of slept here, there and everywhere. I was street homeless. Um, and then How was that? Unpleasant, <laughs> scary, yeah. but fueled um i ended up in the end it i didn't like it it wasn't you know it wasn't comfort but um i ended up going to my grandparents house and my grandparents both took me down the council and i ended up getting in a hostel so i was 16 years old and i got a bed set which wasn't great but for me it was great like looking back now it, I would think 16 year old living on their own not ideal but at the time I was like yes was good, yeah. I've arrived yeah. I don't have to answer to anyone I get paid for living on my own and being going to college you know which I didn't go to college but um it was great I had everyone in that hostel was older than me but a lot of them it was a young mum place you know, there was it was just rife of drugs and drinking and partying, and that yeah, was my so day to day life. I think I would have been scared of that at that age. Yeah, yeah, and I've pretty much been doing it for so long anyway, so like just partying, doing parties through school and stuff. So it was just fun at yeah. the beginning. It was fun. There wasn't any, there wasn't any consequences from what I, from what I felt back then. You know, it was just having a good time every day. Literally, was having a good time, and. Um, it wasn't until later on when the consequences started coming yeah. and you know um i lost my partner to suicide when i was 17. did you um yeah she yeah she committed suicide i was with her the day before and i i held that 
um, for years. Like it was a, That's it a was trauma, my fault. Isn't it? That's a real and, trauma. You know, um, I, you know, I was, I could have saved her, and you know, unfortunately, I couldn't have. It would have happened. Was you that know? to do with drink or drugs? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, and you know. Um, we were heavily drinking the day before and then I got a phone call the next day to say she had died and it kind of was like, oh yeah, you're joking. Yeah. Uh, I thought I it, my friend it. was joking because yeah. I was like, that's ridiculous, you know, she was going to come back to mine, she couldn't come back to mine, but, and I, you know, and it's just all that it's chaos. Like you're, it's, it's shocking, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, um, you know, and then that's when my drink really started spiralling as, as I just was out of control I would do anything to not feel anything yeah, to numb, this, um, numb your feelings yeah and um, when as soon as I turned 18 I got drug, jobs in pubs because I just thought <laughs> best pub, place for you <laughs> drinks mm. where where better to be you know um, you think it's good at the time but that's to like our detriment isn't it you think yeah, these things I, yeah. I had a boss that used to bring wine into work and I thought I'd had the best boss in the world but that was to, that was my dad you know it was, it was the worst thing that could have happened to me yeah like, absolutely it gives, like it gives you more opportunity to drink yeah it? and you know you've got your customers buying you drinks yeah. like literally I, I worked for the chain Weatherspoons oh, okay. so being Weathers, luckily with well not luckily but for me with Weatherspoons you can transfer to any other Weatherspoons in the country like in the UK which was great. So if I messed up somewhere, yeah. I could transfer somewhere else. I think I pretty much what we call a lot. In, what we call in the industry a geographical. geographical yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I done that with women and you know girlfriends and and jobs. I pretty much geographical around the count around the county. And so you, you, would you drink at work then? Yeah, yeah. I'll drink at work. Um, we wasn't supposed to, but you know, in the pot wash, no one knew what I was drinking. You know, mm. I would miss poor drinks pretend oh I've poured the wrong drink slip it on the side in the pot wash and I'd be drinking the rest of the beer well, I'm not going to pour it down the sink yeah, you know. <laughs> absolutely not um, you I, know. Don't think, I don't think any, any alcoholic drunk drink away yeah, and I'd put it on the wastage <laughs> like oh wastage mm. but I'd, you know, I'd drink it throughout the day I would do like um, you know uh, drugs are a part of my story as well but um, so I would do that at work and I uh, just absolute just chaos and Every time I had a partner that would say to me, oh, you've got a drink problem, you know, my big thing was I haven't got a problem with my yeah. drinking, you've got a problem yeah. with my drinking, yeah. you know, complete and utter... Denial. Yeah, like just, I'm just living my best, I was out here, what I thought, living my best life, yeah. and when actually I was just putting myself in the most dangerous circumstances, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing, what I would do... It's all I funny, isn't it? Everything's you know, funny. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was funny, and yeah. I was that party girl. Yeah. Oh, Elle will do it, you know. Get Elle to do it. Oh, she'll stand there and drink that guy under the table. Mm. Like no, mm. no cares in mm. the world. Yeah. Just you know, it was funny to everyone. Yeah. I was, I was the good time. Well, they were girl. laughing at us, wasn't they? And they were, yeah. you know. And I was thinking, what's wrong? Like, what's the problem? You know, every and you know, I heard it heard a while ago. Um, someone say like at the beginning I thought everyone drank like me and then at the end I thought I thought no one drinks like me well, and then I, I found recovery you know I thought everybody and went out to get drunk yeah you didn't just go and have a drink. I'm not playing Monopoly I'm here to get yeah. absolutely thought, obliterated but how you know minded. yeah how I know how narrow minded to think that that is what how everybody is I remember just being in situations like I would be in the sea at like three in the morning off my trolley mm. like like thinking that this was like all games and yeah. jokes and yeah. stuff and it would just you yeah. know I look back and I think I was not well yeah. like that yeah. was not a it well laugh, girl it's sad. you know it's very and sad. you know I can certain things I've done that I can laugh at and people people will go <gasps> yeah. I suppose you've got the same yeah. you know like but you know people us in recovery we can talk to each other about these things and laugh about them yeah. now because we're unshockable now because we've we heard are. so many stories yeah like you know like um and other people just don't get it they'll just sit there and they'll be like oh my god how can you laugh at that mm. you know my last drunk literally brought me to my knees i i'd met my wife and um after after doing the geographical through girlfriends and jobs and um when i met my wife she never said anything about me having a drink problem. That's what threw me off, you know. And um, 
from the off, from me and her getting together, we went out drinking and I remember doing 70 pounds. I'd worked in the pub. She'd met me from my shift at the pub. I was also doing nursing and night shifts. Um, and the Saturday night I worked in the, uh, one of the local pubs in, in Bognor and um, I, she met me from my shift and I was already drunk from where I worked, for I'd been working all evening and you know, I could drink behind the bar and I could, people bought me drinks. And then we went clubbing and um, I sank 70 pounds worth of shots in the space of 20 minutes to yeah, myself. Yeah. Like that was absolutely yeah, normal. Yeah. And she, it, like her and her friends were like, yeah, what, what are you on earth? Like this, this girl's like, not this girl's nuts. Ha ha ha. Yeah, like, she's, she's you know, nuts. there was a part of her that like, was like, what am I getting myself yeah. into? You know? Oh, so, so. <laughs> So she did. So she met you once she was she, just she full, knew, on drinking. full on, yeah. like from the off. So she's a normal drinker. Um, yeah, she's a normal drinker, but now non-drinker, which oh, okay. is completely yeah. understandable. But yeah. Um, yeah, so but she, you know, and she used to, she said to me like because my behaviour when I was drunk was not not acceptable. You know how it is. The things that come out of our mouth, the things we do when we're not when we're drunk is literally I'm too I'm Jekyll and I'm Hyde, yeah. two different people, and. Um, and in sobriety, we have to come to terms yeah, with that. And and we my, to... Yeah, and my wife, she she loved me sober. And I think she it, she's, she always says to me, like, that was, the, that was the ideal because you were the most amazing human sober. Put a drink in it you, is, complete yeah. opposite. But it was like, she said I was just willing for that. She, she knew there was... She, she said yeah. there was, you know, there's something. And she stayed and, um, you know, we... Uh, she used to say to me, "Your behaviour, your behaviour is unacceptable. It's, like, it's not all right." It's hard. And all the time, and and that's what threw me off because she would never say, "You've got a drink problem," Did she not? or "You need to." Not until the end, um, but, but at the beginning, you know, she would never say like, "Your drinking's not right," blah, 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 like any other girlfriend yeah. I've been with. Yeah. So that's what threw me off, and I was always trying to like brush it under the carpet, make nice. Oh, I won't drink for a bit. That was a heavy weekend yeah. kind of thing, and. You know, and we ended up getting married, and um, my wedding day I drank, just, just drank. I drank in the morning, and I wasn't. It wasn't like I, I didn't create any issues, but um, you know, it just for her, it was just like, oh, she's drunk again, and I've got to babysit kind of thing, you know, and um, and then I would just constant. I went for. for for like three years, my poor wife went through that cycle of me getting drunk, her either having to arrest me or, you know, getting me Being arrested, arrested yeah. um, and stuff. And, and, you know, and I, and then... Because it gets so bad. Yeah. We, I, think, I don't think we can, I don't think we can get across how bad and it things does, get. It does. Yeah. It, um, sorry. Um, yeah, and then we ended up, we decided we wanted a baby, so, you know, I just thought, having that thought of, you know, that will, that that will, will, that will solve up. all the problems. Yeah. That will feel, we, we have a hole in the soul, they say. Don't yeah, we? and, and uh, I love my daughter to pieces, but my God, when I got pregnant, I, I, I didn't stop drinking. Did you and not? I, and I'm not, I'm not proud to sit there no. and say, you know, I didn't drink as heavily as I was. Um, being honest. And I'm not proud to say that I drank through my pregnancy, but I did, and I was sneaky, and I lied. And, you know, it's devastating because I, you know, I, my wife now knows about that when she didn't at the time, and it's devastating for her. Um, but that, that could have been a different story, you know, that she's a healthy yeah. young girl, and you're lucky. And um, very lucky, very, very lucky. And, you know, I, as soon as I had her, I had no idea what I what to do. I I I had all this going on with me, not understanding an illness I had, um, and then having a baby, mm. and I just completely was shut down. So at that time, you couldn't look after yourself if you're no. drinking that heavily. So and then want... I was kind of like I'd put myself on autopilot. So you know, thank God I'm you know I'm my wife stayed with me, and you know we we've had this do had our daughter together because she is an absolute. Well, a rock because you know she she did all the night night feeds and um, so was you still, sort you're of still drinking when in, she was but yeah baby, I she was yeah for uh, for the first eighteen months of my daughter's life that's when my that's when my alcoholism really that's that it kicked off 
And, um, because people who don't understand, it, it, it's a progressive illness and yeah. it's it worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And a lot of us have to hit, hit rock bottom yeah. before we can... Before we can rise help. back up. Yeah. yeah. And that's what happened in my last 18 months of drinking. I was on autopilot being a, trying to be a mum and had no clue. Um, postnatal depression. Um, and I would just drink. And drinks are depressive drink. yeah. as well. And, you know, I... I got up in the morning and I wasn't drinking sh as soon as I got up so that's what for me wasn't the problem so you didn't but think you were I was an afternoon it, you know at the first it started in the as soon as my wife would come home I would be drink I would be like my shift's over that's how I looked at it I I could not connect to parenting at all I could not connect to my daughter at all and it's it it was so painful and it was hard and I was like and I literally looked at it as a shift and I said my shift's over now and it's devastating um but that's how that's that's how I was and I have to be honest about it and um you know I've done a lot of work around it and um I and then it got worse because the time started coming earlier and earlier and earlier throughout the day and um towards the end it was just it was just chaos like my my wife was just didn't know what to do and we decided we the my last drunk was 2019 and um I went out with my wife for a friend's birthday and I just I didn't acknowledge her my my mum my or her mum one of our parents had Lana Rose I didn't acknowledge her for the evening. I was with my friends, and uh, she decided to go home. She'd had enough, yeah. um, and I I just spent the evening drunk. I turned up back at my house the following day at seven, six seven in the morning, and um, I was still drinking. I was in someone's dressing gown. I had no ideas. I had odd shoes on. I hadn't. Don't know where I'd been, yeah. um, and. Uh, I it's just, so dangerous. Yeah, I really have no idea what situations I'd put myself in, and I'd done that a lot of times. Yeah, I'd done too. that numerous times, yeah. which is the scary thing. Nothing ever kind of put me off. And then you kind of make it into a joke, don't and you? It was how, like, funny, how, yeah, how funny? Yeah, how funny? Look at what I've yeah. done, and it's you know it's like not, the big I am. But funny. when people are actually thinking, wow, you've gone mad. Yeah, like you know, and um, yeah, I just kicked off. I was pouring. I was drinking gin in the kitchen. I turned my music up. My wife come down and she was like, "What on earth is going on?" And I was like, I was in like full drunk, nasty mouth. Um, and she said, "You need to leave my house yeah. before I get you know like this is not okay." And it just my mouth. I got worse and worse. I went outside. I put a log through her camper van, trying to smash stuff up. And she got me arrested. And I spent. I just. After that, I wrote. I I barely remember that because yeah. she's spoke to me about it so much. Um, you know, she's made me acknowledge it, but I I I don't remember getting arrested. No. I just remember coming to a couple of days later, and I was still in a custody cell. Um, and I just thought, what on earth have I done this time? Um, and uh, when I got let let go when they let me go my mum come and pick me up and she had my suitcases in the back of her car and she just said to me you've lost your wife and you've lost your child and you know and it was a very long silent journey back to my mother's house um and i for people who don't understand what blackout is because i thought blackout was you go have your drink and you black out by falling asleep but mm -hmm. you do things in your wide awake state, <laughs> yeah. but you've got no memory of it. Yeah. It's a complete blackout. So we do things and don't recall any of it. No. Major events. No. Yeah. And um, yeah, I literally, I got to my mother's house and I spent a week in her room, just shut in her room. And um, I just- Not drinking. Yeah, no, I just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I had no yeah. idea. I'd yeah. I had lost everything. Yeah. I'd lost the most important things in my life. Yeah. I'd lost my home, my wife, That's the and power my daughter. Of alcohol. And you know, I literally was beside myself. And I'd done the. I'd tried to do sobriety before on my own, on my own will. I had tried to do the whole, and I lasted a month or two where I didn't drink. And I'd 
it, but I was only ticking boxes to yeah. make people sweet, yeah. you Doing know, other people, keep them sweet. Which we it, know was you never, can't. it was never for me, it has you to know. Be for yourself. And um, I, I was always miserable. I was just constantly like, you know, we say white knuckling it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and I'd never tried. I'd never properly understood being sober or sobriety. Um, and my mum mentioned it got later on in the week, and my mum mentioned to me about going to our fellowship, and um, I didn't understand it. I was like, yeah. "This is none of this is yeah. real," you know. And um, what, how people low, don't how low sit, have I had to get? People don't <laughs> sit there and talk about their problems, yeah. and you know what I mean. Like alcoholism, didn't understand it in what it was. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm grateful. I looked up the looked up the fellowship and. Um, and then that's when my life changed, yeah. when I came into recovery. And um, I, I admitted to myself that I was an alcoholic. That's and hard, that's, isn't it? That's and really that was, hard. No one was, wants to admit that. Yeah, that was the most... Oh, it just freed me. It's the worst... I, I feel it's, it's the worst day of your life and it's the best it's the day of your life. the worst and the best. Yeah. All in one. Because you yeah. can understand why you're feeling it like was, you are. It was the most freeing yeah. thing I've done. Yeah. Most freeing thing. And, and um, seeing people that are, you know, I thought, oh, all old people. That, yeah. You know, and you, and you, you meet really that. intellectual and charming. Just, yeah. Anyone, yeah. like different professionals. Anyone can be an alcoholic. Yeah. Anybody. They can, they anybody. Can. And when, um, you know, that's what I had so much fear. Like, I mm. think, you know, a lot of us have a lot of fear a lot of trauma a lot of yeah. you know troubles and um and, and you actually wonder what you're going to do with the rest of your life as well because you think yeah. drink i thought and i thought it was drink was the cool was the thing. fun one i the thought all end i thought what well, i can't what am I do physically now? give up drinking how am i going to enjoy myself yeah. and you can you know what am i going to have i'm not going to be fun anymore yeah and then now, you're not fun drunk being, exactly <laughs> being in recovery yeah. now when I look back on it there was nothing no. fun about me in the end no, no one wanted to be with yeah. me drinking yeah. uh, you know, we don't even want to be with time, ourselves yeah, do we? most of the time when I was drinking I was sat at home like you know and if I did go out with friends it was because I would, I was so, I was so easy to buy everyone's drink. I'm so generous. Oh, you do. You know, yeah. I, I would, yeah. I would be drunk. I would be so drunk giving it. I would yeah. be like, put it on my card. Yeah. I take my wife would be like, yeah, yeah, just take my card out, do what you like, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I, yeah, people would just come out with me because I would want to keep the party going, you know. And um, it's sad Until looking back out. on it. It's sad, and I've. You know, a lot of people say they lost friends in, in their drinking. And I did lose friends in my drinking, but I noticed when I got sober, I also lost a lot of friends. But when I look back, they're not really okay. real friends. Drinking friends more. Yeah, yeah, they were just, you know, associates, people I could be with if I was drinking or needed an excuse to go out. Um, but, you know, coming into recovery, I've met the most beautiful people. I've, you know, I you build these connections with people. Yeah that are complete strangers and yeah. they turn into yeah. like your whole life yeah. they're just like you've known them yeah. your entire life yeah. and just you know you just you have so much in common even if you haven't walked the same path yeah because our stories are very just, different but we just got you this know, connection you connect with yeah. one another and yeah. you can understand each other mm -hmm. as like from behaviours and mm. the drinking and mm. everything, you know, and and it um, teaches us how to be open, doesn't it? Because you, when when you're so ashamed of the way you yeah. are and the, the way you feel, and you don't think anyone's going to understand it. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I had an understanding mum because it had been in our family, but I still didn't. Mm. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to lose my life. Yeah. And you know, knowing that other people understand what we're going through that is the, the main yeah the main thing yeah yeah and and now it's like i'm i'm two years in now and um the things that recovery's given me is just unbelievable you know i just i've got back my wife i've got back my daughter and you know i've i've I'm, i've done so much work with myself yeah. where i've you know i've I, i've used the alcohol as uh a coping mechanism yeah. for, for my whole life yeah. everything anything that happened to me it was oh have a drink you know and I don't have to do that today no. and that is the most that is what I'm most grateful for is the fact that I can deal with with my life yeah. as it is yeah. you know and I can I can have an there's an issue if an issue crops up today I can process it like a like a normal yeah, human being. Yeah, and anything's you know, manageable, and isn't it? it is. Everything's manageable. It's really manageable yeah. from going from that unmanageable yeah. person 
to I can you, you can't know. face anything on them last days of drinking you can't face yeah opening a the door phone, opening a letter you, anything you can't it's face anything just, you're just so buried yeah. in the sand you just can't get out yeah. and it's not like that today no. it's really no. not you know I, I I'm open and honest with yeah. with so much and I'm not afraid to to you know look through my phone the next morning i'm not afraid to open my eyes and think where am i am i in my bed you know it's regretting regretting what you've done yeah constant regret and shame Mm. and you know the the not knowing and you know for me the massive thing is my is my wife i'm really lucky because i always say to her you know why did you stay and she said, I knew you were there, the oh, woman yeah. I loved, so deep lucky. down. And yeah. I and I just you just had to find yourself and stuff and you know, which was lovely that she really she understood me before I she understood must be myself. So happy, but to have and you. she said you know, she said I, I, I might have had three, four years of shit, but I get to live the best of the rest of my life with the best version of you. Oh, you know, that. and and she's not a drinker today, you know. She if she wanted to go and have a drink, she's not like us. She can go and yeah, have a drink. Yeah. But she's respectful. She said to me, she, I'll never pick up a drink in front of you, I'll never do that. Um, That's where you're lucky. See, my partners have always to, been heavy drinkers, but yeah. people that like to drink and I always yeah. gone for that type. And she was when I met her. Oh, okay. She was a partier. Mm. Um but, you know, I think it, obviously a a lot of the stuff I've done through my drinking to her has, has stayed with her. You know, I, I have to remember, like, she's got so much anxiety yeah. around the stuff that I put her through through drinking. So some of it, sometimes, you know, she can, that's still there. For me, I'm all right. I've, I've blacked out half of the time. Exactly. So yeah. a lot of it I don't remember. She so, does. you know, when I, when, I, when I work a program today, I have to... I have to, you know, I make them daily amends to my to my wife every single day. That's something that's not going to stop. Um, but that's by keeping me sober, being sober. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. And and that's I owe that to yeah. her. That's you know? the only way I can make it up to my my boys yeah. because yeah. they they see me sober a long time now. Yeah. And every day staying sober is an apology to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly the same for me. Yeah. And you know, with my daughter, I I. It was painful putting I put her through that for the first 18 months but I'm really grateful in a sense of you know she, I know that she wasn't in any danger she didn't go through any harm and uh, thankfully she thankfully, won't, yeah. won't sit and think of she's not gonna remember that she'll never know a, a drunk me which I'm I'm grateful for um, you know because if I hadn't found recovery I would, I, there would be, she wouldn't have a mum. No. She wouldn't have a mum. I would you be, wouldn't in, have been able to take care I would of be her. in prison yeah. or I would be dead. Yeah. Her mum yeah. would be dead. That yeah. It would be as simple as that, yeah. you know. I don't think people re- realise how bad, no, because that is, that, it's a killer illness. It is, it's it a is. killer illness. Yeah. And it is either death. And that's, and that's what, Pris- you know, like you, you say, know, being in recovery yeah. is we're never t- we have we can't bec- you know we can't become too complacent with this yeah with yeah, this it's, stuff it's a, because it's it a is struggle, st- there is easier. still a part of it's us that wants though. us yeah. to to go yeah. back but we have to and that's why we work very hard at what yeah. we do each and every day and I don't think people understand you know we do work we really work hard, hard for this we have but to it's work. worth it and it is it's so it worth is. it but because there there's there's two end results of picking up another drink again and yeah. you know as i just said it's literally prison yeah. or or death yeah. because and i think when, when you get to the end days of your drinking you want don't want to be around anyway no until no. you can find that strength to stop and i always and you know i it that well, i wasn't suicidal i i like in the end of my drinking i didn't want to be here no i was like i don't want to be up, here, anymore. here again? i didn't want to necessarily yeah. die but, didn't but want to be I didn't live want to continue yeah. living yeah. my life the way yeah. I had lived my life. Yeah. And I had, there was no other option until yeah. I found the recovery. Yeah. And it was like, there were, and then I found that, that there's another solution and it's yeah. this. Yeah. And isn't it a life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? And I hope some, you know, some people are going to get from this. Yeah, that was that was absolutely mm. you know that was but eloquent, um, Thank Eloise. You. Thank you and very much. you know I, I think that message has really gone out to people that you know just share about it, yeah. get it off your chest, yeah. and abstinence is just the only answer. Yeah. There's, you know, there's yeah. doing this, talking, sharing. There's not a pill you can take to get better. You oh, know, there's not, not doctors can't even. You know, it's it, you've got to just want to do it. 
stop and stay stopped any way you can do it professionals can help you with as well your, with your trauma yep. and stuff but i think when it comes down to the alcoholism one Back alcoholic to, to another yeah <laughs> definitely oh, that's brilliant thanks <laughs> thank you for having me lisa thank you, thank you.